Hey everyone, good morning. Uh, today I'll be presenting on the topic among us, the zero trust model. And we will be discussing about the impostures that stay between our network and hide in plain sight. Uh, first, a little about me. My name is Sarthik Taneja and I'm working as an information security engineer at a fintech corporation. You can find me at Twitter and Discord. So, uh, a little bit introduction about zero trust model. Initially, zero trust was created by John Kinderwald during his realization that the traditional security models operate on a, a like outdated assumption that everything inside an organization's network should be trusted. But under this uh, broken trust model, it is assumed that a user's identity is not compromised and that all users act responsibly and can be trusted. The zero trust model recognizes that trust is a vulnerability. Once on the network, users, including threat actors and malicious insiders, are free to move laterally and access or exfiltrate whatever data they are not limited to. Remember one thing, the point of infiltration of an attack is often the, not the target location. They move laterally and get to the target location. Why a zero trust model is needed? With the, as we can see with the modern workforce uh, becoming increasingly on the go, accessing applications from multiple devices outside of the business perimeter, enterprises have adopted a verify then trust model. They verify explicitly, which means if someone has the correct user credentials, they are admitted to whichever site, application or device they are requesting. This resulted in an increased risk of exposure dissolving what was once trusted enterprise zone of control and leaving many organizations exposed to data breaches, malware, and as we all can see, ransomware attacks. Protection is now needed where applications and data and users and devices are located. To be competitive, businesses need a zero trust network architecture, able to protect the enterprise data wherever users and devices are. Meantime, also ensuring that applications work quickly and seamlessly. Uh, I came across by researching about zero trust model, and this is the perfect definition of zero trust. That zero trust is not about making a system trusted, but instead it is all about eliminating the trust factor from the organization. Uh, when we talk about impostures, there are mainly three categories of impostures, which can be insider threats, devices, and applications. Insider threats can be both granted and side granted employees. Granted employees can be uh, employees which are fired or which left the organization and now have malicious in intent against the organization. But side granted employees can be which are like angry from angry from management or just experimenting stuff. For example, not all insider threats have the malicious intent. I can share one example I went to, like uh, I, during my last job, I was testing an uh, ransomware on my device and like my intent was pure and I was tuning an idea, but it went wrong and the, my machine was compromised. So insider threats can be of this type also so zero trust must be there to not have any mishappening on the network devices can be both trusting and infected same as applications can be both trusted and compromised and the like there can be a spyware hiding in our network and we get to know about it like after two or three years we have seen the uh, these kind of attacks in recent supply chain attacks then we come to uh, secure access services model, which is mainly a SASE model. Before diving into the specific, specifics of SASE, it's important to understand a bit of background on this new term. Existing network approaches and technologies simply no longer provide the levels of security and access control digital organizations need. These organizations demand immediate, uninterrupted access for their users, no matter where they are located. As we can see, with an increase in remote users and software as a service applications, data moving from one data center to cloud services and more traffic going to 
public cloud services and branch offices, then back to data center, the need for a new approach for network security has risen. So what do we mean by a SASE? Uh, SAS is an basically an emerging cybersecurity concept that Gartner described in August 2019 report, The Future of Network Security in the Cloud. With so many similar terms and acronyms uh, floating around, it's important to make sure you understand what our vendor is actually talking about when you are discussing the solutions of the network. The concept of zero trust came about because the old network security model of inside means trusted and outside means untrusted no longer works. The zero trust model moves security away from the like it it asks for the uh, explicitly verification of the user whether uh, they are trusted or not. The concept of came about the zero trust model moves security away from implied trust that is based on network location. Instead, it focuses on evaluating trust on a per transaction basis. Then we come to after zero trust, it evolved to zero trust access model, which is ZTA, and then it further evolved to ZTNA, which is zero trust network access model. Zero trust access is about knowing and controlling who and what is on your a network. Role based access control is a critical component of access management. Only by knowing definitely who a user is can be appropriate level of access be granted based on their role. Is the user an employee, a guest or a contractor or can be a, even a malicious guest in our network? Whatever is the role and what network access sites does that role entitles them to. Unfortunately, ZTNA isn't the most obvious naming convention because although it's called zero trust network access, it's really all about brokered access for users to application. So it might have been a clear call to zero trust application access but better or worse in ZTNA. A key takeaway is that ZTNA is an element of the larger ZTA proposition. So uh, I try to explain how SASE actually works. So first a convergence. SASE is basically a convergence of van wide area network. It's the simplest form. A wide area network is a collection of a local area networks or other networks that communicate with one another. A WAN is essentially a network of networks and the internet we use almost every second of the day is the biggest WAN we use. Then we come to a CSP solution, which is a cloud access security broker. According to Gartner, cloud security access broker is an on-premises or cloud-based security policy enforcement point that is placed between a cloud service consumers and a cloud service provider to combat and intercept the enterprise security policy as cloud based resources are accessed. As we all know, organizations are increasingly turning to CSP vendors to address cloud services, enforcing security policies and complying with regulations even when cloud services are beyond their perimeter and out of their direct control. Then we come to a FWAS service, which is firewall as a service. Firewall as a service refers to a cloud firewall that delivers advanced layer seven, or we can say next generation firewall capabilities, including access control, such as URL filtering, advanced threat protection, intrusion prevention, and uh, DNS security. The concept of firewall as a service is not about simply virtualizing appliances. Firewall as a service enables organizations to eliminate firewall and simplify the, uh, we can say, IT infrastructure. Centralized management from a single console enables organizations to eliminate the challenges of change control, patch management, co coordinating outreach windows, and policy management associated with next generation firewall appliances. By delivering consistent policies across the organization where users can connect. Then we come to zero trust model. So basically, SAS is the con convergence of wide area networking or WAN and network security services like CASB, firewall as a service, and zero trust into a single cloud delivered service model. According to Gartner, uh, SAS capabilities are delivered as a service based upon the identity of the entity, 
real time context enterprise security compliance policies and continuous assi assessment of risk trust throughout the session identities of identities can be associated with people group of people devices applications services iot systems or edge computing locations gartner expects that by 2024 at least 40% of the enterprises will have explicit strategies to adopt sasi up from less than 1% at the year end of 2018 that's amazing right a sasi architecture identifies users and devices apply a policy based security and deliver secure access to appropriate application or data this approach allows organizations to apply secure secure access no matter where the users applications or devices are located so uh, basically as i have seen that uh, people confuse that it's zdna versus sasi or but uh, zdna and sasi but think of sasi as a higher level design philosophy than zdna they are not separate or competing network security models rather zdna is a part of an overall sasi architecture note however that while security implementation may be short to medium term objective for network architects sasi is a long term goal organization may decide today and they buy into sasi approach and then move slowly while their network and security starts towards the sasi model they will take time as designers move to replace outdated security technologies and better integrate those that remain note that moving to a sasi model both requires and enables a zero trust approach to network security here we have the uh, sasi architecture mainly sasi aim is to blend the services and technologies to build a cloud aware and cloud based security network a sasi model is especially appealing to organizations that abundantly use the cloud and cloud services or are on a path to the cloud this includes distributed organizations for example those with branch location and dispersed end users as well as businesses with iot and edge deployments the sasi security model can help your organization in several ways first which is flexibility imagine with a cloud based infrastructure you can implement and deliver security services such as threat prevention web filtering sandboxing dns security data loss prevention and next gen firewalls policies in a single bundle then cost savings instead of buying and managing multiple point products utilizing a single platform will dramatically reduce your cost and it resources then it will also reduce the complexity of the network you can simply uh, you can simply simplify your it infrastructure by minimizing the number of security products your it team has to manage update and maintain consolidating your security stack into a cloud based network security service Uh, what's it? Uh, then SASE model also helps in increasing the performance. With the cloud infrastructure, you can easily connect to wherever resources are located. Access to applications, internet, and corporate data is available globally these days. then zero trust model is add on to the sasi model or it always includes a zero trust model a zero trust approach to the cloud removes trust assumptions when user devices or applications connect a sasi solution will provide complete session protection regardless of whether a user is on or off the corporate network then it comes with threat prevention like with full content inspection integrated into a sasi solution you benefit from more security and visibility in your network then as we said the dlp and data protection comes with sasi implementing data protection policies within sasi framework helps prevent unauthorized access and abuse of the sensitive data it is uh, like achieving it is a myth that achieving zero trust is often perceived as costly and complex however zero trust is built upon your existing architecture and does not require you to rip and replace existing technologies there are no zero or such zero trust products in the market there are products that well work in zero trust environments and those that don't 
GeoTrust is also quite simply to deploy, implement, and maintain using a simple five methodology, which is uh, identifying the protect surface, map the transaction flows, build a GeoTrust architecture, create GeoTrust policy, and then monitor and maintain. Protection surface can consist of identities, endpoints, data, application, infrastructure, and network. Building a zero trust, uh, zero trust architecture includes these major four steps. Uti uh, utilization of micro-segmentation. So what is micro-segmentation? Micro-segmentation is a process of breaking up the security parameters into small zones to maintain separate access for separate parts of the network. For example, a network with files living in a single data center that utilizes micro-segmentation may contain dozens of separate secure zones. A person or program with access to one of those zones will not be able to access any of the other zones without the separate authorization. So basically, it is like seg further segmentation of access. Then we come to uh, multi-factor uh, authentication. Multi-factor authentication is a basic building block of an intelligent approach to network security. Properly used it, it reflects the guiding principle of the zero trust. Never trust, always verify and verify explicitly. Our MFA requires the presentation of two or more authentication factors, such as a knowledge factor, something only the users know, such as password, pin or pattern, a position factor, something only the user has, such as an ATM card, smart card, then an inheritance factor, something which contains a biometric characteristics such as fingerprint, retina, and face scan. Upon presentation, each factor must be validated for authentication to occur. Then we come to uh, come to principle of least privilege. Principle of least privilege is also no, known as need to know basis. It is a practice of limiting access rights for users to bear minimum permissions they need to perform their work. Under principle of least privilege, users are granted permission to read, write, or execute only the files or resources they need to do their jobs. In other words, the least amount of privilege necessary. Additionally, the principle of least privilege can be applied to restricting access. Rights for applications, system processes, and devices to only those permissions required to perform authorized activities. Just like users, the uh, user devices cannot be trusted without verification. To achieve complete zero trust security, identity centric controls must be extended to the endpoint. That means every device used to gain access to the corporate resources must first be enrolled so that it can be recognized and verified. Device verification should be enabled and organization to determine whether the endpoint seeking to access internal resources makes this security requirements or not then we come to guiding principles of zero trust model it is mainly based on three principles which are verify explicitly use of least privilege access and assuming a breach verify explicitly is always authenticate and authorized based on all available data points including user identity location device health service or workload data classification and anomalies can be included as well using uh, least privilege access is limited user access with just in time and just enough access risk-based adaptive policies and data protection to help secure both data and productivity productivity of the users assuming breaches minimizing the blast radius for breaches and prevent lateral movement by segmenting access by network user devices and app awareness assuming breach as we can see is all uh, always included into uh, corporation cyber resilience programs as well verifying all sessions are encrypted end to end and use analytics to get visibility drive threat protection and improve defenses the zero to security market will grow to uh, grow from 19.6 billion dollars in 2022 it is expected to grow from 19.6 billion in uh, 2020 to 51.6 billion dollars in 2026 as data security solutions are responsible for securing business database and information such as customer details financial information and employee database 
as well as the other key business data of any organization huge amount of data is generated every day across organization in various industry verticals and effective management an organization database may comprise of sensitive data such as personally identifiable information personal health information or intellectual property as well as payment card and financial information so uh, corporations are moving more to the zero trust uh, model to secure their data uh, i would like to uh, thank uh, mr amin gilani who uh, who was uh, the coach for this for this particular talk and uh, maggie ferro to help me making slides and stacy for always having my back uh thank you or uh, any questions i'm not seeing any questions in the discord channel but what are some of your favorite um, tools, paid or open source, to um, audit or evaluate zero trust, if any? Uh, okay. So, uh, according, uh, like during my uh, experience for zero trust model, I have used various Palo Alto uh, products such as Prisma or their SaaS infrastructure. And for firewall as a service, we have used next generation firewalls. And then as an EDR, we have used Cortex X here. Awesome. I have a comment that says, no questions here, but great job. Looks like everyone really loved the talk. We have them for just another few minutes if anyone has any questions and wants to put them up in Discord. Why do you why do you like zero trust over other models of I, I know it's not a regulatory framework, but why why is zero trust one of your preferred frameworks? Okay. Uh, like uh, as we are evolving in the technology, our traditional security models trust the users or our internal applications or internal devices. But internal users or gruntled employees or side gruntled employees can go wrong. Rogue. Even machines can go rogue, and even the trusted applications can go can go rogue. So under the zero trust model, we verify explicitly verify again and again and again, uh, in regular intervals of time. So there is not a factor of trust. We eliminate the trust factor. Yeah, I um I was first exposed to zero trust when I started using Infection Monkey. Infection Monkey will actually give you in its reporting output like MITRE alignment as well as zero trust kind of compliance alignment, which is pretty fantastic considering it uses a propagating agent. Anything from you, Wade? I got nothing. I have no experience in zero trust, so it was a lot for me. Um, I'm still trying to catch up on all of it, but it was a good presentation. And I enjoyed it overall. I'm a big advocate of zero trust because trusted relationships, um, it's actually a MITRE TTP. It's one of those things that can like, like we in red teaming so rely upon to abuse like, oh, like exactly. you have an Okta session cookie. So you have a trusted relationship to all these applications or whatever. And it's like zero trust says verify every request, every resource, every person, every time. Like there is no trusted relationship. There is no like just assumed permissions access at any level. It's like everything is going to be verified every time, which I'm personally a really big fan of from the blue side, even though it makes my red teaming life a little harder. <laughs> that was just my coin. <laughs> 30 minutes to our next talk, so we have some time to burn. 30, 30 or 20? 
Is it 20? I thought next one starts at 1230. It's at 21. It's at, 21. yeah, 1230. Right. It's going to be like 930 our time. Right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, got I am right. Every time. Everyone just hear Wade say that. They're always hear Wade tell me I'm right. This is recorded, so I guess. Uh, see how many times we can get him. Be, to there will be evidence. <laughs> uh, I will like that, though. So uh, we got one question. How would you get started on adopting Zero Trust? Ooh, great question. Uh, so basically, Zero Trust, adopting Zero, uh, first, the uh, Zero Trust model should be a ideology more than the specific tools. Like management should see the organization traffic incoming and outgoing on the basis of Zero Trust model. So first, the uh, ideology should be adopted. Then the tools should be tuned on the basis of zero trust. And the verification and authorization must be there. Good principle to live by. Security is doing the basics well, people. That's basically what zero trust says. <laughs> Do the basics. Luckily, doing the basics well is hard. Otherwise, I wouldn't have a job. <laughs> right? None of us would have a job. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for our time. That was an amazing way to kick off um, the new speakers track over here. Uh, I don't know if that was your first time speaking or not, but you did a great job. It was engaging. Everyone loved it. I personally loved the topic. Zero Trust is very near and dear to my little hacker heart.